good afternoon to one and all present here so as you can see the topic of my paper is displayed on the slide and at the very core of it my paper focuses on the constructs of memory and emotion next slide please Within the purview of developmental traumatology, trauma located in a point of time defined by infancy and early childhood is marked by non-verbalization of authentic reactions, often misconstrued as a protective factor. This negligence in appropriate management promotes management of trauma. It promotes deficits in very important brain areas that are involved in curating uh, aspects of a sensory and affective experience. So as a slide on display, it shows events of childhood, they're often believed to compose the roots that ultimately shape the adult version of self. So specifically for the purpose of my paper, studies, they have attempted to advance some semblance of a deterministic explanation of the linkage between childhood trauma and adult psychopathology, for example, psychopathy. For example, if we remind ourselves of object relation theories or attachment theories such as that are Bowlby's, we could assume that traumatic memories such as those that are built upon lack of neglect, lack of care, neglect, or some sort of abuse, they often lead to a sort of fragmented self, which may lead to dysregulation on a psychobiological level. And for instance, this may lead to future development of Machiavellian traits. So for the purpose of my paper, I have developed this pre-working model that is on display wherein derived from insights gained from past research, I posit that Alexei Thynia it may be a factor that mediates the linkage between early childhood trauma and later adult psychopathology through the manifestation of emotional ineptitude, which is basically a terminology that is of the author, that is my own formalized coinage. Now, Alexei Thayme is basically a subclinical inability to identify and describe emotion, emotions, one's own emotional experience, and thus it leads to dysfunctions in emotional awareness, social relations, interpersonal attachments, et cetera, et cetera. So research has also shown Alexei Thymia mediating association between, for example, disorder rating and childhood abuse. And emotional neglect has particularly been found to play a very important role in the development of Alexei Thymia. Next slide, please. The present study, it aims to explicate a sub-manifestation of this mediatory role found in the trait of emotional ineptitude as coined by the author, that is me, from inferences gathered while building very sparse preconceptual knowledge. So as you can see, the objectives have been displayed on the slide. Can childhood trauma induce em emotional ineptitude, which is often identified as a core component of psychopathologies, and an attempt to create a working model that will explicate the definition of emotional ineptitude and, this, and its psychological manifestations. This will contribute in furthering the understanding of the mediatory role that is played by Alexi Thymia in linking childhood trauma with adult psychopathology. Next slide, please. So the study was conducted using semi-structured observation method through an oral visual medium. And this involved focused observation of the trait of emotional ineptitude by, which was recorded by viewing the titular character of an American TV series named Dexter. The character is of interest in living out this moral and social duality in the very facets of his self and identity that range from being a disguised serial killer to a nuanced human embodiment of trauma. This particular form of media calls out an all-encompassing experience by usage of its artistic license that enables, enabled in the compartmentalization of behavioral, social, internal, spatial, societal, relational, and aesthetic manifestations of the trait that is a focus that is emotional ineptitude. Following the selection of the character, a specific episode was chosen that would help in isolating the qualities that would delineate the concerned attribute of emotional ineptitude. Commencement of process of data collection, it entailed repeated viewing of the episode to make observations with specific focus on discerning and noting down any instance depictive of the attribute. The data was organized into categories on the basis of their relevance to the central attribute. These categories form the basis for further analysis and results. And in analysis, the trait as constructed within the narrative arc, it was used in order to posit a working model of emotional ineptitude that triangulates the inner authentic aspects, the outer performative aspects, and the broader macro world in relation to manifestations of the said trait that is emotional ineptitude within the protagonist in question. The model also yields a definition conceptualizing the foundational elements of the trait of emotional ineptitude. 
And in my subsequent analysis, I focus on the plausible route to adult psychopathology as defined by emotional ineptitude. Next slide, please. To provide a background about the character and series in brief, so the character in question is Dexter Morgan. Dexter Morgan is a forensic technician specializing in blood splatter analysis, but he also leads a secret parallel life of that of a vigilante serial killer who you know, hunts down criminals who have evaded justice. So throughout the whole series, viewers get an insight into his mind, which is often in contrast to what he presents to the outside world. Dexter is someone who's grown with a self-perceived dark personality and is, has this constant urge to kill stemming from witnessing his mother's brutal murder as a child aged two. He believes that this trauma led to a shift in, shift in him and made him emotionally divorced, internally empty. He displays a need to exhibit control over others, as well as he exhibits incredible amount of self-control because he has channelized his urge to kill in a justifiably moral direction because he is a vigilante serial killer. Apart from this, he's indulged in this well-rehearsed social act wherein he conceals two natures, fake social interactions, but is very intelligent, very introspective. But all of this is to blend in this supposedly normal world. So next slide, please. The episode that was chosen in question is the pilot episode. And the pictures here, they basically depict the important plot points that have been set up in the episode. Now, the pilot episode, it is functional in the sense that it presents, uh, it sets up the important plot points and it also provides a succinct glance into who Dexter is, the character of Dexter without any sort of external influences of narrative development or character growth over the, uh, over the course of the series. So as the pictures depict, we are introduced to Dexter Morgan. We are shown that Dexter, we are shown Dexter, that Dexter is killing someone. We are shown that he, he has blood samples of victims as souvenirs or memorabilia. And then the scene shifts to the crime scene because his profession is that of a forensic technician because of social desirability and acceptability. And we see that at the crime scene, he's fascinated by the presentation of the body because the body is, has been drained out of blood and that fascinates him, that motivates him to induce creativity into his own art of killing. Apart from that, we introduced to his adoptive sister who is in the police. And we have shown that he maintains a social act. He perfects it in the sense that he's, he, has also, he also has a girlfriend in order to continue with his pretense. So uh, next slide, please. So on the basis of my note making, I basically, uh, the data that was collected, I organized into categories, which are depictive of the varied facets of Dexter's behavior, you know, whether it be his overt expressions, his covert expressions, his perceptual sound properties, family relations, interest inclinations, his spatial behavior, etc. And it has all been displayed on the slide in question. Next slide, please. Now this slide, so based on the categories that have been tabulated in the previous slide, I have sort of attempted to develop a working model of emotional ineptitude that depicts the manifestation of emotional ineptitude within this one single specialized case that is of Dexter Morgan. It may not necessarily have generalizability, but we, we know that case studies in general, it's very unique case studies in general, they do prove to be very insightful in nature. The depiction of the trait of emotional ineptitude is in the form of three overlapping circles. So the very innermost circle, it's blue in color, it's representative of truth. That is, what is Dexter's self-perceived true personality? So all the varied aspects that you can see, his urge to kill, his compartmentalization and all, all, all of his innermost aspects. The sandwich circle in between, it is uh, representative of the, his, micro, his micro outer world and it represents seduction. How red color in general, it represents seduction. How he has seduced people into changing their perception of who Dexter is, of Dexter's eye. How he has influenced people in accepting his projective personality. Finally, the outermost circle, it is composed of macro aspects which have influenced the trajectory of Dexter's life in general, whether it be culture, whether it be law, whether it be his adoptive father, whether it be norms in general, and all of the aspects that are, and all the descriptions that have been provided for each of these aspects, they are all, uh, they explicate how they are associated with the central at, uh, attribute of emotional ineptitude. Next slide, please. 
So as you can see, based on the working model, I have attempted to define this trait of emotional ineptitude and its psychological manifestations. And basically it refers to this lack of ability in perceiving oneself to be in possession of emotions or a genuine dissociation from emotional repertoire over the long term or a belief comprising a distorted conception of self deviating towards the constructed atypical. And as you can see, it may lead, it may cause an individual to be devoid of social and emotional skills required to navigate the world and in extreme cases lead to severe adult psychopathology. Next slide, please. Finally, the model was utilized in forming the linkages between our concerned constructs of study in Dexter's case. And as has been illustrated in the slide, Dexter's childhood trauma that is witnessing his mother's murder and the very overwhelming nature of the traumatic event, it might have caused a rapid regression of affect to a preconceptual level of organization. Combined with the impact of trauma, the emotional neglect in dealing with the child through appropriate treatment and ignorance of the severe impact of trauma, it could that, you know, the severe impact of trauma on future development on both the authorities and caregivers part, it might have been responsible for Dexter's own internal inadequacies. During the series, it was revealed that Dexter might have been misdiagnosed as a psychopath or a sociopath. So his difficulties were being increasingly internalized. It manipulated him into believing irrational beliefs about self. So it further reinforces behavior. Then there's the maladaptive parenting aspect because his adoptive father, he focused more on channelizing Dexter's urges into supposed moral direction and thereby preventing sufficient emotional expression for Dexter, sort of facilitating the development of alexithymia, where Dexter could no longer recognize the presence of any sort of emotion within him, and hence for the belief of internal emptiness and consequent emotional ineptitude. The lack of emotions can be considered as one of the basis for Dexter's further disconnect from the human species, erosion of conscience and guilt, and ultimately paving the way for psychopathologies that allow deviance from socially acceptable so-called normal human behavior. Now, with respect to Dexter's psychopathologies, although a veritable diagnosis cannot be inferred, yet he might be suffering from PTSD in the absence of support, sufficient emotional expression and release, and demonstrates a sort of repetition compulsion in his fascination with blood, emerging out of being left in a pool of blood, which is a very defining element of his traumatic memory. He could also be suffering from OCD, indicated by a very intense, intense compulsion to kill, his very meticulous, modest operandi, and his dedication and devotion to the whole art of killing. He may have also been a product of his own father's narcissistic personality disorder, which made his father feel that him being a cop justifies acti him acting in a very supposed superior position and take law into his own hands. So he has basically played a role in clouding Dexter's sense of morality and diminishing hopes of rehabilitation at the right age. And all this apparent lack of guilt and moral conscience, it may be demonstrative of antisocial personality disorders like psychopathy or sociopathy, but there have been very specific instances of him demonstrating very surprised emotional responses, regret and care for family members. So it prevents us from labeling him as a psychopath or a sociopath. Further in establishing connections, emotional neglect has been related to lower acceptance rates of one's own emotions, a stronger physical symbolization of emotions as well as subjectively perceived in emotional regulation. And mediation analysis, as mentioned before, it has shown that alexithymia significantly carries an influence from attachment avoidance to severity of obsessions in the case of OCD. And several authors also propose that it may underlie behavioral and emotional instability in personality disorders. Uh, uh, to yeah. conclude, delineating- I apologize to interrupt, uh, but uh, you extend the time, please conclude in one minute. Yeah, I'm concluding it. To conclude, delineating the irreducibility of the complexity inherent in the path engineering adult versions of the growing child is pertinent in cultivating more humanized manifestations, especially with regard to the propensity to psychopathology and criminal behavior. The usage of the audiovisual medium may raise questions of realism and debatable infiltration of glamour to serve the purpose of entertainment. But the cinematic medium through the usage of its narrative elements, plot devices, and technical aspects ca catering to our varied senses indulges in creative and nuanced presentation of the complex tapestry of themes, symbolic of reality as we know it, and is definitely insightful for applicability in the real life. My study has implications for how the remnants of trauma, weathered through various interaction influences, align the trajectory that trauma takes over the lifespan into adulthood. Finally, I particularly wish to emphasize the banality of evil and how holistic efforts dedicated toward deconstructing the complexity would help in not succumbing to mystification. Thank you.